Hey everyone, today we're doing another video speedrunning some tier lists. These are all very strange or just very specific tier lists that I've picked. Some of them suggested by people from my Discord. These are going to be the type of lists that are probably put in the comments as a joke a lot of the time. And now we're doing them for real. So let's get into it. Starting out we have killer titles ranked. For this we're ranking the killer names, as in their the names. We have three tiers. Average, good, and amazing. In the average tier we have the names that are simply descriptors of the character. I find these names kind of boring, and I think something a bit less obvious could have been more fun. So this includes the nurse, the doctor, the pig, the clown, the demogorgon, the cenobite, the onrio, and the knight. I don't dislike these names, but as names that represent them, they're the worst of the lot I think. Very simple and obvious. The ghost face is gonna follow them up. He has a uniqueness in that his name is the only one to have three words in it, but that's something I like and dislike, as it feels kind of out of place. Also, the ghost face sounds kind of silly. I also want to put Trickster here, because I think his is just very unfitting to be honest. Sure his stage name is Trickster, but that name still doesn't really make too much sense to me. The Plague and the Spirit I want to put just above the others, just slightly, as I think their names have a bit more mystique to them, but it's still essentially a description. The next tier along we have the names with a bit more description and something more unique sounding, and less like an observation of what they are. The Hillbilly and the Huntress are the lowest tier, as two that are similar to the ones before, but slightly more descriptive I think. The Trapper is going to follow closely up, with a similar simplicity, but an interesting sound to his name, and almost an anticipation that comes with it. The twins, the cannibal and the oni all feel somewhat on the nose, but also feel a little more descriptive and also intimidating. All of them have more of a threatening aura, which feels fitting with their role in the realm. The wraith and the artist also feel a little more descriptive, having a supernatural aura and imposing presence respectfully as a result of their titles. They both feel a little more abstract, I guess. The Blight, the Nemesis, and the Mastermind are a step up from this, with their names sounding more threatening. Blight has a disturbing aura to it, Nemesis is just a scary title that makes him sound directly angry with you. <laughs> Mastermind feels maybe a little silly, but it still gives him a larger presence or aura to his character. For the Amazing tier, we have the characters with really spooky names, which make them sound very unique and fit them well. Starting out we have The Dredge, which is just a really cool sounding name. It's creepy and weird and ancient sounding, and it fits The Dredge itself perfectly. The Legion have a really awesome name. It fits them very well I think, and it makes them sound quite imposing. The Hag is next up. This name is really creepy and disturbing, mainly with how the name clashes with the truth behind the character. The name Hag makes you think of an old witch essentially, and knowing Lisa is likely only about 18 in reality is disturbing to say the least. The Executioner and the Deathslinger are next, with two names that are just really cool sounding and super intimidating. They sound very experienced and threatening. The best combination of intimidating, creepy, and just generally impactful as names are both the Nightmare and the Shape, I think. These two I think are the best names in the game and are both very fitting for the characters. Next up we have Killers I Could Beat in a Fight tier list. <laughs> for this one we have four tiers. Definitely not, maybe a chance, an even match, and finally Yes, I would win. Starting out we have the definitely not tier. In this tier we have Trapper, Wraith, Hillbilly, Nurse, Shape, Hag, Doctor, Huntress, Bubba, Freddy, Pig, Clown, Spirit, Legion, Plague, Ghostface, Demogorgon, Oni, Deathslinger, Executioner, Blight, Twins, Trickster, Nemesis, Cenobite, Artist, Sadako, Dredge, Wesker, and Knight. Okay, moving on. Okay, so for this we're ranking the exit gates of each realm based on their visual design. We're just gonna go worst to best for this, no tears. At the bottom we're going to put all of the standard gates. These are all the gates with the common lever action switch, 
and the blue sliding door that can be seen on the majority of maps. There's a few differences here and there, like for example on Midwitch, it's grey and kind of built into the wall, same with the game, but overall it's the same gate really. Coldwind Farm and Lampkin Lane I would put a bit higher, with the pig and ghost mounted on the top part. It's a creepy decoration on both, with Coldwind's tying in well to Billy's lore, and the Haddonfield one referencing Halloween, the film. <laughs> I like these slight alterations, and it does make them stand out, which is nice. Next we have the Garden of Joy. This exit gate is visually very similar to the original one, but it has a slightly different coloured gate, and the surrounding structure is this pale wood storehouse kind of thing. It's a bit more visually interesting and the smashed in roof gives it this disturbing feel. Eerie of Crows is the same door but has a much cooler structure surrounding it, with the lighter bricks and the sprawling branches that crawl up it. It's this huge epic structure, and just really nice to look at. I really love it. Raccoon City Police Station is next up. This one I really like, with it exploding with this weird entity matter, corrupting the entrance and its sign. It's fairly simple visually, but I love the vibrant look of it. The Shattered Square is gonna follow this up. This one is amazing, oh my, I love it. The portcullis is such a cool idea, and fits the map really well. The huge castle and its towers is so awesome, and even when you've opened the gate, there's a little bridge with a moat, and ugh, I just love it. Really, really awesome. Dead Dog Saloon is going to be in our top spot though, being the only map to actually change the model of the exit switch itself, having this cool steampunk vibe to it, with all of the pistons and stuff. The structure above, I believe, can change, but overall they fit the map. The different switch is the main reason this is the highest. It's really cool. Next, we're doing Halloween Weapons Ranked. So this is the candy-related weapons we got during the 2022 event for different killers with candy-focused designs. The worst of these weapons, I think, is the Doctor's Glucose Injection Bat. This thing is very simplistic, keeping a similar shape to the base bat just being translucent blue candy. It would be nice if the wires were changed up a bit, for example. Overall, quite simple, but I still like the candy design. We then have Sickly Sweet, which is a weapon for the twins, and has their base sickle weapon, but with these honey-coloured clusters across it, and these big larvae caught within the candy. It's a cool idea, but a bit visually messy, and kind of hard to make out. A definite improvement over the Doctors though, having a more unique concept. Rock Candy Cleaver is Trapper's weapon, and this one I think, although very simple, has some really nice colours with the pink and the green. I feel like those two colours in general are quite rare in Dead by Daylight, particularly the bright versions so it's nice to see them. Bon Bon Bone Saw is a cool weapon for the nurse. It takes on the original shape of the bone saw, but instead has hard green candy for the blade. It's got lots of small pill capsules stuck inside it, and a needle poking out the very end. I really like this one. A nice colour, fitting for nurse, and interesting small details. The Plague's Gumble Vessel is next up, with her sensor being transformed into a gumball machine. It's a really awesome idea, and is executed very well, with all the little gumballs, with the dispenser at the bottom. Yeah, cool concept for the theme, and works really well. However, my favourite is the Honeycomb Hammer for the Hillbilly. I I really love the entire design of this thing. The honey colour, the inner honeycomb, and the thick coat over it, and then all the small bees or flies that are on the honey. It's just a really interesting looking concept, and even the little bit of lore we get on it has a cool story. How good would each killer be as a Discord moderator? <laughs> this one was submitted by one of my Discord mods. For this we'll have four tiers would destroy the server, would be awful as a mod, would be okay as a mod, and would be a great mod. Starting out we have would destroy the server tier. This tier is for those who would not be concerned in the slightest for moderation, and would destroy the server. Doctor, Legion, Ghostface, Trickster, and Cenobite 
would actively cause chaos, I think. Nightmare would be more focused on scaring the server, and Pig would trick people into breaking the rules so she could time them out. Shape would heavily breathe as he destroyed everything in sight to fulfill his evil mission. Ghostface would be the same, except he'd be snapping pics as he does it. Next we have would be awful as a mod. I think the characters who don't know modern languages or technology would struggle greatly. <laughs> Also, Demo wouldn't understand, I think. Hag, Plague, Oni, Blight, Dredge, and Knight, I think also fall under this. Additionally, we have the characters who I think would have too short a temper to moderate. Hillbilly, Huntress, Bubba, Clown, and Nemesis would all be either too short-tempered or too sloppy as moderators, and simply wouldn't care about how the server was going. Spirit, I think, will also be put here, she maybe is one of the better picks prior to becoming a spirit. However, nowadays, I think she's probably a bit too quick to anger. Sadako would be in a similar spot, I think, too, and maybe a little too focused on vengeance toward anyone who annoyed her. Moving on to the would be okay as a mod tier. <laughs> In here, I think we can have some of the more disciplined characters like Trapper. Trapper would be able to relatively fairly moderate a server, I think. Nurse, I think, is in a similar boat. They both would just need to channel their remaining humanity. Deathslinger, I also think, has some anger in him, but would generally be a good judge when it comes to moderation, trying to be fair where he himself felt wronged. Finally, we have the would be a great mod tier. First up, we have Wraith who I basically just think would be a fair judge when it comes to moderating. He's got humanity left, it seems, and he's one of the calmer and more mild-seeming killers in the realm. Artist is next, as a character who just seems to have a less killery backstory than many other characters. She has experienced lots of pain and injustice in her life, and actively fought against it. So, as a moderator, she would do a good, fair job, I think. Twins are next, and again, I just think they would be very fair. They know a lot about being treated unfairly, so when put in a moderator position, would want to treat others as fairly as possible, I think. Executioner is at the top here. I mean, he's the judgment character. Harsh, but fair it seems. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed these tier lists, and let me know how you would rank these different things too, down below. Thanks, and... Okay, bye! Thank you for reaching the end. I really, really appreciate it.